Okay, so I wanted to do this question because I realized that um, I haven't done this question. It, it can cause a little bit of difficulty because of two different pieces that you need to manage. So the question says this. It says that a uh, um, proton in a synchrotron is moving in a circle. This is actually important. Uh, we'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. It's moving in a circle. And it's giving me this information about how its speed is changing as a function of time with some coefficients and all that. Okay. So it asks, what is the proton's total acceleration at some time? And here's a common mistake that I can imagine people making, and this is why I want you to cover it. I can imagine someone, sorry, I don't have the, all the right pens. This, this got changed on me without my notice. Um, so I can imagine someone uh, thinking this way. So you know that acceleration is defined as rate of change of velocity. And you have velocity given. So you take the derivative. And using this expression, constant term drops. This is a polynomial. I remember my polynomial differentiation rule. The power comes down, and the, it gets replaced by original power minus 1. So I get 2 times C2 times T. Uh, this is why this is calculus-based, the physics class. And, and when you plug in the numbers and figure out an answer and plug it in here, you will find that that answer is wrong, or at least the system tells you it's wrong. <laughs> And um, uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, this is the thing that you have to watch out. And it is, it is there in a very subtle way in the question. But unless you've seen it before, it's really easy to miss. So let me point out uh, what those subtle points are. One is where it says it's, a, it's a speed, not velocity. So why not velocity? Because the way we use these terms in this class, speed and velocity are not synonymous. They don't mean the same thing. Velocity means one thing. Speed means something related, but different. So whenever we talk about velocity, I will uh, often emphasize that it's a vector quantity. It's a quantity with a magnitude and direction, and that matters. And when you are thinking of the definition of acceleration, what it really should have been is acceleration as a vector quantity is a rate of change of the velocity as a vector quantity. And this is where we circle back to that it's a motion in a circle. So you have to have this uh, mental image of the particle moving in a circle. So I have a proton that's going to be moving in a circle. So its velocity changes, even if uh, you could imagine a scenario where its uh, speed isn't changing, um, its velocity will be changing by the virtue of the fact that it's moving in a circle. So your textbook drives a, a formula for what we call centripetal acceleration. That is the inward acceleration that points towards the center. This centripetal acceleration is given by V squared over R. So that's uh, what you have to contend with. So when you are looking at a velocity that's changing as a function of time, both in terms of its speed and in terms of its direction, you have two components of acceleration to worry about. So one will be the component that, so this is actually related to one of those components. So it describes, so the description of the change of the speed, you could call it the tangential component of velocity, V tangent. And how this tangential component changes, that will give you the acceleration in the tangential direction. Uh, let me draw the acceleration vector separately because that, drawing is getting a little bit um, <laughs> too busy. So let me imagine this particular snapshot. Um, and let's say this is the moment where uh, time is equal to five seconds. Somehow I timed it all that so that at this moment in time, it's time equals at five seconds. 
and I have uh, two components of acceleration to worry about. There's the tangential component of acceleration that points this way, and I can say, oh, that will be given by the derivative of a speed, uh, how much the length of the velocity vector is changing. So I can use that. And the other component you have to worry about is this uh, centripetal component, the part that's pointing towards the center of the circle. That will be pointed this way, and it will be given by a different formula that's derived in your textbook, v squared over r. So what the question is asking here, and it, it is trying to give you a little bit of a hint by asking for total acceleration. It could have also called it uh, asked up for the magnitude of acceleration. So what the question is actually looking for is the length of this quantity here. Um, so I imagine adding the radial component and the tangential component, and this is the resultant. This uh, length here, that is the magnitude of the acceleration vector or the total acceleration. This is what the question is asking for, and that's what you have to work out. So, uh, so let me work out the numbers. I think uh, here it's a uh, quickest to do it. Uh, uh, quickest to do it just in a calculator. So uh, I have this expression already worked out. Two times c two times um, just the t. So two times c two. I have ten to the power of five, or one times um, ten to the power of five. Uh, times five seconds, five. So I have uh, one or 10 to the power of six. So this is going to be uh, 10 to the power of six. Uh, I guess the units should be meters per second squared. And, um, and when you are plugging in the answers, you will have to also uh, account for this part of 10 and in, in Having done that, it'll still be wrong because we still need to account for this. So let me work out that value numerically. So I need a uh, value of um, uh, speed at time equals uh, five seconds. So that'll be just plugging in these numbers into this expression here. So C1, 6.8 times uh, 10 to the power of 5 plus... Um, C2, uh, 10 to the power of 5 times uh, 5 squared, uh, 5 seconds squared. 5 squared, so that's my speed at this moment in time, 5 seconds. Let me square that for V squared. And then divide it by the radius. It says 1 kilometer, so that's 1,000 meter. So yeah, that's a big number, um, 10.1 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 9, so meters per second squared. So um, to find this hypotenuse of the right triangle, what you have to do is use Pythagorean theorem. So this will be a square root of AT squared plus AR squared. Now, having said that, I can tell you that given the big difference between these two numbers, this is a thousand times small, or sorry, 10,000 10, times <laughs> smaller than this, the magnitude will be basically this. Uh, you could almost ignore the tangential acceleration because it's so small compared to the, the radial acceleration. So I'm just going to use this because I, I know that will get accepted as a correct answer. So let me just uh, get to that and enter um, enter 10.1, then times 10 to the power of 9, that's already taken care of there. So so yeah, that's a, um, so this is a really centripetal acceleration question. You could uh, almost uh, ignore the tangential acceleration <laughs> and get the right answer. But if you want it to be everything to be conceptually on solid ground, then um, so you should uh, uh, work out both components of acceleration, the perpendicular component, and figure out its magnitude using this right formula. Um, 
Part to be at what time does the expression for velocity become unphysical? Really, what it's getting at, and I think the hint mentions it, uh, what it's getting at is this. Um, we have a, there's a universal speed limit. Speed of anything with a mass, it cannot be greater than speed of light C, which is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So I'm just going to look for when this speed here will become 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So let me just equate this to C1 plus C2 times T2, T squared. Uh, I think I can solve it for T squared. Let me just do that in my head in the interest of time. T is equal to square root of uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second minus C1 divided by C2. And uh, in working out the answer, I can tell you that given how much smaller C1 is compared, C1, this number, is compared to 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second, I can approximate this as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second simply divided by C2. And it'll be within, so the, when the system grades these answers, it does by relative tolerance, uh, usually 1% tolerance. So I can, from my past experience of working out these things, I know having ignored the C1, my final answer will still be within 1%. So yeah, it's quicker this way. 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by C2, which is 10 to the power of 5. So 1 times 10 to the power of 5. So that's that ratio here. Let me take the square root. So after 54.8 seconds, um, it would supposedly be faster than speed of light, which is unphysical. So 54.8. So yeah, that's uh, this question. Um, it can be challenging, so I want you to make sure I cover it this time so that I can, um, so that when people have a similar question, uh, so whenever you have questions, so this is what I encourage you to do. Um, so when you are working through the problem sets, um, like as a student, let me just uh, show you a preview mode. Uh, you should see these links. There's a message instructor link. Uh, you can use it. Use that to send me a message, and I will uh, read it. I will do my best to answer it. And um, and um, so to the person who asked this question this morning, I did the message something back saying, uh, oh, this is what you have to watch out for. And when I do that, it's kind of hard to, to draw drawings like this. That's where the video, I feel, is a little bit better because I can clarify what I mean with certain things by drawing them out. So.